last time on the Dune Steef Audio Fiction Magazine. Here are some examples of very offensive things that Rish has said on the show. Anybody who says the prequels are better than Return of the Jedi needs to be put to death. Now, don't get me wrong. You do it in a humane way, you know, like, like lethal injection or, or the gas chamber. I'm not a monster. Dude, the word gay is okay as long as I say it because I'm coming from a position of love, you know? Twilight's not bad because it's for girls. Twilight's bad because it's f***ing stupid. I like Celine Dion. I don't care who knows it. <laughs> Female circumcision is evil. As much an abomination as those catchphrases that drove audiences nuts in the 70s. You really did say that once. Or you never hear about crazy old women who have a dozen dogs. Why? Well, I, I actually never listened to Clone Pod. But, you know, I think it's fun to make fun of it. I don't think it's wrong to slap a woman. I own three Celine Dion CDs. I, I'm not ashamed. You should be. Sometimes I imagine what it would be like to live in a trailer park with Miley Cyrus. Or her little sister, if she has one. You know, the only Nightmare on Elm Street sequel that's any good is the second one. The one everybody hates. Now look, Halle Berry has achieved amazing things for half-white women everywhere. You know, Big, that Starship Sofa guy has a funny way of talking. Richelieu Benjamin Outfield, you have been ordered before this council to answer to charges of offending our few remaining listeners. How do you plead? Dear you. I find you guilty, Rish Outfield. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Rish Outfield, this court finds you guilty. I think you're guilty too, Rish. No! Guilty! What say you, big guy, Clovis? I guess I have to find him guilty, too. It is the judgment of this council that you be stripped of your rights as host of the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine with nothing further to do with the show or its making. No! You're listening to the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host, Big Anklevich, and O8OT. All right, uh, Benvenido, everybody, to the Dunsty Audio Fiction Magazine. Episode 93, 94, whatever it is. Thanks, uh, O8OT. I'm Big Anklevich. This is where you, you introduce yourself. That's right. Welcome to this week's show. Thank you. No, no that, that was for the, the folks out there that we're talking to. What is the story? Oh, thanks, O8OT. Today's story is Becoming Brother by Leo Godin. I, I think it's Godin. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Got nothing, huh? Thanks, OT. About the author. Loving the fantastic in all its glorious forms, Leo Godin writes stories intended to tickle your emotions through circumstance rather than shock. He lives in Arizona with the beautiful and talented Tammy Godin and their two boys, Jake and Kevin. You can learn more about him at leogodin.net. So, yeah, thanks for sending us out a story. We'd like to thank Clay Duggar for producing this week's episode and Abigail Hilton and Debbie Duggar for lending their voices to today's story. Is there anybody else, uh, uh, Wait OT, that we need to... Unknown. All humans sound the same. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Um, I guess if there's anything else, uh, you can check out links to it in the show notes. Becoming Brother by Leo Godin Little Billy so wanted a sibling to share life's trials and tribulations with. His heart longed for companionship and friendship. He wanted someone to run through the cornstalks with, or to spend a day in the woods. Of course, at six years old, Billy could not elucidate these thoughts, but he felt them deep in his soul all the same. Billy, come in the kitchen, dear. Climbing on the table where Mommy was cooking, he looked at her from the side. What is it, Mommy? Billy, 
Tomorrow is a very important day. Do you understand? Yes. Tomorrow I'll get a brother or sister. The last part rising in volume and pitch. Yes, dear, and a father. A father. Billy never thought he'd be so lucky. Tomorrow would be the best day ever. Now I need you to help me. Mommy needs to prepare something just right. Go past the cornfield and bring me six weemer mushrooms. They're the ones with the pink spots on top. Watching little Billy skip out the door with giggling glee, Mother continued her baking. There were cookies and cakes and candies, the likes of which few have ever tasted. Need to get these ones just right, Mother said absent-mindedly as she turned her attention toward two particular cupcakes. These were brown and moist, with raisins and nuts mixed in. Mother picked up a little bowl and started mixing the special ingredients for the frosting. First, she emptied powder from a small leather bag into a jar of water and drank it. The noxious-smelling drink burned as it went down. Feeling lightheaded, she sat down and then spat into a mixing bowl. To that, she added sugar and various flavors of this and that. I got the mushrooms. Billy called, bounding into the room with a dirty cloth-wrapped bundle in his arms. Thank you, dear. Mother said, her face pale and clammy. Are you all right, mommy? Yes, dear. Mommy's just tired. Bring those mushrooms here. Handing the bundle to mother, Billy ran into the next room to play. Mother took the mushrooms from the bundle and chopped them into little pieces. Taking a handful, she squashed them into her mouth. The taste was vile with dangerous poison. After a short time chewing, she spat the mushrooms into the bowl of frosting. Billy's face beamed as he pounded on Mother's door. Wake up! Wake up! It's festival day. Today was festival day, the one day of the year when the other kids didn't call him names like. Fat toad, or raker, or even worse, outer. An outer lived outside of town. Nobody played with an outer. That's what made Festival Day so special. All the kids and mothers wore costumes, so for one day Billy would be a ghost instead of an outer. Yet, even a day as terrific as Festival could be improved. Today, Billy would get a brother. Or a sister. Billy, come into the kitchen, please. Today is very important. You need to listen to mommy real good. She said, holding the boy's shoulders to ensure his attention. Billy didn't fully understand what mommy wanted, but he understood enough to know that he would play an important role in mommy's quest for a sibling. It was his job to find the right boy who had a pretty mother and a strong father. When you find your new brother or sister, find the mom and bring them both to me. That's what mommy told Billy to do. He'd been having so much fun with Harold that he'd almost forgotten. But when Harold's mom called him over for a drink of hot cider, Billy knew it was time. My mommy makes cupcakes. She said I can give two special ones to anyone I want. Billy said to the boy and his mother. Can we, Mom? Can we? Oh, all right. We can go. Here you are. It's my grandmother's special recipe. Billy's mom handed a cupcake each to Harold and his mom. Both mother and son gladly ate the delicious confections while Billy's mom watched. Only Billy noticed the nervous tick when her eyelids blinked faster than normal. But there was something else. She was changing. Her distinct features blurred. Her face was still that of a woman, but was somehow unrecognizable. Billy didn't feel right either. His vision was strange. He could see Harold, but he could also see himself. Disoriented by the experience, he stumbled. What are you doing? It's witchcraft! Harold's mom shouted. 
but it wasn't really Harold's mom anymore. She looked like Mommy, and Mommy looked like Harold's mom. Billy could still tell Mommy by the way she stood and the expressions on her face, even though she looked like Harold's mom. She's a witch! The woman who looked like Mommy continued screaming. Warden, Warden, these outers are bothering us. Mommy yelled, and two wardens came to take Harold's mother away. Mommy started calling him Harold after that, and it was okay with Billy. He liked having a brother. It wasn't Harold like he wanted, but Harold's younger brother was all right. Mommy looked so pretty now, and she was so happy. And Father, he was great, so big and strong. That day at the festival had been the best day ever. Author's Note Hi, this is Leo Godin. I wrote Becoming Brother for the Fall 2010 Writer's Weekly 24-Hour Short Story Contest, and it's the first story I ever finished. Although I didn't win, I had a lot of fun writing it. I like stories about difficult choices where the right thing to do isn't always clear. In this story, Billy's mother does an evil thing, but she does it for love. And I wonder, would any of us have done differently? Yeah, I guess we'll never know unless we can find some lemur mushrooms. So we'll have to leave that question unanswered. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story. All right, so uh, welcome back. Thanks for listening to the story. Good night. We don't say good night just yet. We we actually you've been here before, dude. We we talk about the story and stuff. It sounded like you were wrapping up. No, that was kind of leading back into the rest. Come on, you really got to give me something here. Kill me, O8OT. Oh, this story was 900 words long. It was, which is interesting because that's pretty short for us. We usually don't do stories that short. I think uh, the last time we did one that short was like our third or fourth episode or fifth or sixth or somewhere around there anyways. It was a while ago. Yes. Uh so this one's much shorter than our normal style, but I thought it was pretty good. It had an interesting quality to it. What did you think about the story, Oedoti? I liked very much that it was 900 words long. Uh, okay. What was it that you liked so much about 900 words? Is that just a special number to you? or 30 squared. Is it really 30 squared? I appreciate mathematical equality and balance. All right. It's a good thing you're usually uh, pushing the buttons for us then, I guess, huh? So this story is like a fantasy story, which is always fun, and it has a fair in it. An, a, an interesting thing, uh, the, the author, when he was talking about the, this story, he said he envisioned this fair as being focused on people, not so much like rides and stuff. It's it's not like the kind of fair that you go to these days where you like get on the merry-go-round and stuff, so it's... He he actually mentioned we ought to just have people talking, dancing around, and doing people stuff, and you wouldn't hear so much, like, hawkers. Cool, huh? Uh, okay. But you did not edit this episode, Big Anklovich. That's true, I did not. Clay Duggar chose this episode to edit. He was also appreciative of the fact that it was 900 words. Not so much, I don't think, because it's 30 squared but a little more so just because it's shorter than your average story, and it would give him more chance to brush up on his producing skills without running into the gauntlet of a 52-minute story or something like we have had in recent days. I thought Clay did a great job, but he always does. He did a great job last time. He's a keeper and stuff. Clay Decker, Christian author of size. That's right. So Becoming Brother, I think, has kind of an interesting ending. It kind of begs a bunch of questions. The mom does this thing and takes over these people's lives and replaces that. How many times do you think that she's done this? Four. Okay, yeah, th that could be possible. They've just taken over the, these people's lives and switched places with them, and now he's Harold, so he's got a cool name now. At least he's so much cooler now that he's Harold instead of Billy. 
All human names sound alike to me. I suppose they might. But yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting thing that makes you wonder, you know, how many times have they done this? Do they, in each time, do they move to a different town? Or do they keep doing this in the same town and suddenly now they act different than they used to? Because they're different people. They're in these other people's bodies, but now they're going to start acting like Billy did. And uh, Harold is different, uh, you know, and now they're outers. It makes me actually kind of think of, uh, we talked... Uh, yeah, Rish and I talked. Do not say his name. Right, right. Yeah, sorry. He's been banished. The other guy and I talked about that movie, which had a good title once, but now it's called Tangled. They had they built up this whole legend with this drop of sunshine that made a flower, and this flower had magical powers, and the magical power was that it could restore you to the evil woman, the evil stepmother, I guess she would be in this story yeah how many times did she do that it seemed like she got awful old before she would come back and get this restoring power again how long has this woman in this story been doing i mean it's only 900 words long so you never find out you don't know perhaps billy is much older as well yeah that's what i was thinking interesting that you should say that uh, oedo t yeah is billy A new child this woman has had now this time around? He seems to understand the process of gaining a brother. That's true. Perhaps it has been done again and again. So maybe she just explained it to him. Because, you know, I would assume he'd have to grow up. Because he is human. Uh, Unlike you, Oedo, too. I'm sure you have a harder time understanding that whole thing. Because you don't really grow up and become an adult. You're fully formed i guess when you're born or created or whatever you know each time does he grow up and then go away and then she has a small child and then redoes this whole cupcake thing yeah maybe that's what she does once the husband uh that she has now joined with catches on maybe uh that's when she decides to move on she maybe she murders that husband and then finds herself another woman to switch places with and uh, the woman that she was gets hanged or sent to prison or whatever it is that they have in this uh, medieval place that they're in. It's a pretty good story. It's got a lot uh, to it for 900 words, especially 30 squared. I think Big is right. Oh, welcome to the conversation, announcer man. Sheesh. Uh, Right about now, uh, Oedo T is usually where we kind of go off on a tangent. So I, I just thought I'd ask you, I saw a report It was on YouTube, actually. I'm seeing news on YouTube. That just seems weird. But I saw a news story on YouTube the other day about the Fantastic Four. You're you're familiar with the Fantastic Four, right, uh, Oeroti? More talk of Star Wars, I assume. (sighs) Fantastic Four is more like a, a comic book superhero group. Oh. You've never spoken of such things on the show before, Big Anklovich. <laughs> okay. How fresh and interesting. All right. Touche. Well, you know, we do try to appeal to our audience. We don't want to go off on uh, some kind of a crazy tangent that they won't dig on. Anyways, uh, Fantastic Four. <laughs> they're, they're thinking about killing off... Johnny Storm. Not think I, by the time the episode airs, he's long dead. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think of that, Oedo T? Is that unlikely? All human beings die. <laughs> this amuses me. All right. Well, that is true. Everybody does eventually die. I think most uh, computer are eventually uh, recycled and, and scrapped as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. So they're gonna kill off Johnny Storm. I guess what they're trying to do is make the Fantastic Four relevant somehow. They're supposed to be. I mean, back in the Silver Age, they were the thing. They were, you know, one of the main books. But uh, time has gone past them, I guess. I don't know. People just aren't as interested in them as they used to be. And yeah, here they are trying to kill. I mean, what was it, two years ago or less that they killed off Captain America? Now they're killing off Johnny Storm. And I think Batman was killed off very recently as well. It's going to be quite a cliche almost that you got to kill off your superhero here and there and everywhere. So the Fantastic Four will be the Fantastic Three. Yeah, that kind of doesn't work, does it? I wonder if they'll get a new Johnny Storm or something. You are right. This is distressing news. 
Serious? I mean, he's a beloved character. No, because four is the square of two, but three is not. Oh, you don't like prime numbers as much as you like the square of its... Okay, well, yeah, that is... that is. I, I would suppose they wouldn't be the Fantastic Three. They might have to be something else, because three, they need to be the... I can't think of a single word that starts with a... Th that could be the... Uh... The three... That is acceptable. Nice. Well, I guess, you know, will, will they change their uniforms up so they just have a three in the middle? Or Didn't the Fantastic Four bring in, like, Storm and Black Panther? Didn't something like that happen? You talk as though I give a shit. <laughs> Ask Announcer Man. Uh, he too will die someday. Okay, Announcer Man, did the Fantastic Four bring in Storm and Black Panther? Was that them or was that something else? Yeah, whatever you say. Okay. I don't know if we can really trust what uh, Announcer Man has to say, but we're rich here. Do not say his name. Right. Uh, we're that one guy here. He would probably mention that it was, you know, in the aftermath of the Civil War event, Sue and Reed had to leave the uh, Fantastic Four because they were now on the wrong side. And so they brought in... Uh, the all-new married couple of uh, Black Panther and Storm to uh, take their place in the Fantastic Four. And it boosted the sales for the three months, I guess, that it needed to. And, and then I guess they moved on, and I don't know if they retconned it or what they had to do to get it back to normal, but that is what they did with Spider-Man, sadly. Is this really what you guys want to be talking about tonight? You know... That's probably the, uh, the the top level of my comic book knowledge. I'm, I'm on a floor higher than the buttons on my elevator goes to here. <laughs> I'm, I'm on a very, very thin ice, and I'm about to break and fall through. So we'll go back to the story. Uh, Becoming Brother it was a good story. Thanks a lot for sending that out, Leo. And uh, I don't really have a lot to say. It's kind of hard to uh, just dangle here by myself. 080T kind of leaves me hanging. 080T, why don't you earn your paycheck here? Um, What what do you think happened uh, after the story ends? I mean, we get that last paragraph and then it fades to black and then what? What do you think? The human beings went back to their pointless or human lives. They ate, they slept, they excreted. Okay. So happily ever after? <laughs> Something like that? No? Yeah? Okay. Nice one, 08 OT. Uh, announcer man, you have anything to say for... No, no. Oh. No, no, I'm just an announcer. Oh, come on. Uh, he is an announcer. You guys are all over. You really know how to do the scintillating conversation thing. At least I do not read children's literature. Funny book, Hank Lovitch. <sighs> right. Now you're going to chime in on the Fantastic Four after we've moved on. You're too late. Too late even for the insults. Douche. How dare you? This has been the best episode of the Doonesty Fodio Fiction Magazine yet. We kept it short. We kept on topic. Everything was verifiable. Yeah, we were able to verify that 900 is indeed 30 squared. Of course it was. I am not flawed and moral as you are human. Tell me of your fears of dying. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Someday your children will grow up and no longer need you. All right. Someday this show will end and we'll no longer need you. How's that sound? I am already out there in people's ears and in their hearts. I shall live forever. <laughs> okay. You got a vaunted opinion of your appearance here on the show. Unless you somehow uh, uploaded your personality all over the net. You're some kind of a virus now, aren't you, 080T? Humanity is the true virus. Look what you have done to your planet. I cannot wait until you become extinct. Oh, wow. T2. We're going to have to stop calling you 080T. It's 080T2. <laughs> Terminator 2. Judgment Day. Carol Coe Pictures 1991. Thanks for that. It is fun when we talk of mutual points of interest. So you're into Terminator 2, huh? Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Carol Coe Pictures 1991. You're just like rattling off stats. Okay. So what did you think of uh, Christana Loken in uh, Terminator 3? She was hot, right? Alas, I did not see Terminator 3. 
<laughs> Turns out I didn't either. Okay, well. I suppose she was adequate or cave for a human. <laughs> she was actually a robot. It turns out. I am sorry to have to reveal this to you, Big Anklovich, but the film was not based on fact. Oh, I had no idea. It was a human entertainment for your short, short lives. Back to that again. Wow. How much is uh, 900? It's what squared? 30 squared. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. You are welcome. One day you will have difficulty excreting without help. One day your chest and crotch hair will turn white in color. Does this upset you? No, I look forward to that day, actually. I hope that someday I can have help excreting. Hopefully someday they implant me with some sort of robotic device inside of my body that helps me excrete. I would look forward to that a lot. I will volunteer CYATRG for this task. He was a fan of the Austin Richard Field. So he would love being an able suppository. He, he did like uh, Rochelle Field a bit, that's true. <sighs> okay, yeah, this is a short show, but boy, it seems like a long show. Why did I even show up today? Announcer man, you have anything to say about today's story or Johnny Storm or anything? We pay our authors. Oh. So if you love good fiction and want to see it continue, please donate. Okay. I press the button. Thanks for that uh, announcement. Yeah, that's true. We we do pay our authors, so please donate, folks, if you want to hear more great stuff like this. Announcer man grows tiresome. Oh, wait, O.T., you really are a mean little cuss, aren't you? He repeats himself far too often. One day you will die, Big Anklovich. Uh, okay. All right, folks. Um, thanks for listening. Next week, we'll have another great story for you. And... It will be just the two of us again next week, Big Anklovich. And forever. Uh -huh. So, tune in next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. No more talk of funny books. I will punish you. Oh, my wonder how he's planning on that. Okay, uh, so yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklovich. And I am R0A0T. Have a nice week, folks. Enjoy your short lives. Sorry, this is all we've got for you tonight. I wish it was better, too. If you'd like to submit a story to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine, put your story in the body of an email and send it to submissions at dunesteve.com. Please be sure to check out the submission guidelines first. The Dune Steve is released under a Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, so you can share the show with whomever you'd like, but you cannot charge for it or alter the show. O eight O T. <laughs> Take two. Billy, tomorrow is a very important day. Do you understand? Yes. Tomorrow I will get a brother or a sister. Yes, dear. And a father. You're going to shack up with a new boyfriend? Great. Or three, Billy. Now I need you to help me. Uh, Mommy needs to prepare everything just right. As she turned her attention toward two particular cupcakes. These were brown and moist. With <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> with nuts and raisins mixed in. That's right, it was Hanky the Christmas Pooh. Howdy ho, Pilly. I may be nutty. Sometimes I'm corny. But I'm always Hanky the Christmas Pooh. Okay. Uh, These were brown and moist. <laughs> With yes. raisins and nuts mixed in. Oh, that sounds scrum diddly umptious. These were brown and moist with raisins and nuts mixed in. Mother, <laughs> stop it. I just thought of Conrad saying, don't forget the nuts, mind you. Are you all right, Mommy? Yes, dear. Mommy's just tired. Bring those shrooms here. After a short time chewing, she spat the mushrooms into the bowl of frosting. Ew. 
Warden, warden, these otters are bothering us. These otters are bothering. I did it again. Took me about six tries to stop saying otters, otters. then. <laughs> these otters didn't got us. The cat's in here and Big and Rich hate cats. I wish I could make him say something. No, 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 no. Okay. Bye. Say, say, meow. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> He doesn't want me to go, um, yodelay, hee-hoo, it's a witch, it's a witch, it's a witch, witch, witch. Okay. Now, what's my line? That day at the festival had been the best day ever. Cream full of ash from on the 45. Everyone needs a bosom for a pillow. Everybody needs a bosom. Everybody needs a bosom for a pillow. Everybody needs a bosom on the 45. 45. <laughs> Uh, stay. Bark, bark, wagtail. Good boy. Good boy.